Good morning and welcome to Worship on Acts Sunday. We begin by lighting the Christ candle. both Elder One and Master of Ceremonies of the Acts performance and, uh, and uh, I almost forgot I had to light the Christ candle before we could start. Getting, getting old, I think. Uh, but, but, uh, <laughs> what we do at this time every year is talk about the work of Acts and give thanks for the work that Acts has been able to do out in the community. And this morning... A number of the board of directors of ACT, we're a registered charity now, just like any charity in the community, we're totally responsible to this church, but we have, like all charities, a board of directors now. All of those who are in town are taking place in the service here uh, uh, this morning. And, and uh, we have Bernie, who's our treasurer, who's going to give a report on what ACT has been doing, and then... Shirley will give us a message, Shirley Kubash will give us a message and do the readings and then there's two short comments by Wally Ray and, and uh, Andrew Norton who are both, uh, Wally's the secretary and uh, they're both going to talk about how they came and were called to serve with Acts and I'll give a report on a message about Acts and a report on the future and, and uh, then Jose, another director, uh, sitting up and hiding away in the far corner over there will lead us in the prayer in the prayer for for others but this morning we 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 just give thanks for the privilege of serving the community in the way that this congregation tries to do with acts so let's open with a very brief prayer father we are proud to be active, working partners of Jesus of Nazareth. Thank you for the privilege of walking with him to create a better world. Amen. Let's begin by singing the hymn TIS 217, AHB 148, Love Divine or Love's Excelling, and we're going to sing three verses.
a few announcements uh, before we get into the main part of the service. Now, this morning, uh, there is a wonderful event on between the two church services called Soup and Crusty Bread, and the ladies have been cooking up soup for days. You can smell it all over the suburb. And you can, if you haven't already bought a ticket, you can still buy one. They've got a few spare cups of soup left. It'll cost you $10. That's the best soup in town. And so if you haven't paid up, see one, just go to the door and pay up and you'll be, and you'll be, uh, you'll be welcome. Uh, now, I have no special announcements to make other than that it's uh, uh, Acts Sunday and you'll, you'll have read your notice sheets and you'll know what's going on and Sandra will be back again with us, uh, with us next Sunday. Now, so we'll get on to, uh, to celebrations and uh, I've... Uh, some people have had birthdays, and I know some of them are shy, so I'll tell you who they are. Coral Ryan is one of them. Where's Coral? <laughs> hey? Yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday it was. No, next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. And have you bought her a decent present? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, splash, splash out a bit this year, mate. Pam Peterson, over there. You're having a big party sometime, aren't you? I hope young Greg has given you something decent. If he doesn't, call me. And Elaine Hawthorne, I think Elaine will be here in the next church service. Who else has got a birthday? No one else got a, got a birthday. Who's got married this week? No marriages this week? Well, there's some, a few concerns we should, uh, we should mention. Uh, our old mate Barry Maxim is, uh, is not well. He's, uh, his health is in rapid decline over the last couple of weeks and Mano contacted us yesterday to say that he went to see him and poor old Barry could not, uh, could not speak. And oh. I think that Barry is uh, the stage in life where he wants to be with Margaret and we hope that that happens as peacefully as possible. And Jane and Phil are here this morning and you've been doing a wonderful job looking after him and we're with you as this important part and precious part of your life. Now also Lynette Zimmer, uh, prayers for Lynette's 16 year old grandson, uh, Ethan, who was knocked off his bicycle in Caboolture Road last Thursday afternoon when he was riding to work. He's in the Caboolture Hospital, uh, but he's, uh, he's, okay. he's okay. Now, and also, Brian Gaston just mentioned to me that a real old Methodist, he used to come here back in the Methodist days, the Williams family, Orma Williams was a, and the, her family were members here, but George Williams, age 98, died this week. He's an old Lancaster pilot in the war be interested to know whether he knew Helen's brother. Helen's brother Jim was a Lancaster pilot during the war. He's dead too. But George died age 98, a distinguished uh, veteran, and we think of, of the family. So let's... Are there any other? Any other ones? Yeah. It's a different sort of concern for the children in Ukraine who are doing music to raise funds. Yes, I saw that on the online news, and they're... We will. That, 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 that's true. Are, are there any, and, and there's all sorts of wonderful things happening with people doing extraordinary things in Ukraine. Are there any other concerns anyone wants to bring? No others? Well, let's have a, have a prayer. Father, we think of those of our number who are having birthdays this week, Coral and Pam. May they have happy days. And uh, we think of uh, Lorna Zimmer's grandson, Ethan, in the Caboolture Hospital. May he recover uh, well. And we think of the people in Ukraine who are doing so wonderfully well in dreadful circumstances. And we pray for our old friend, Barry Maxim. And we think of the happy days we had with him 
Because one of the things about Barry was he was always a happy guy. And he led a good life, been a great member of this church. And we think of Jane and Phil and all the other members of the family as they are with Barry in his final days. And we thank you, Lord, that as a church family, we're able to celebrate together all of these things. Amen. We'll have the offering. Father, one of the privileges of being a Christian is that we're able to give and to serve. And these offerings today to further your work here and in this place are an important part of our life as Christians and we thank you that we can do that and we pray that the service that we give to the world will grow in strength and purpose every year. Amen. Now the Axe team goes to work. Bernie Meyer, who is the treasurer of Axe and looks after our funds very well, is going to give us a report on where Axe has been giving his money. You sure you're not cold, Bernie? <laughs> I'm from Canberra. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is, uh, if you didn't hear, is Bernie. And um, I joined the board of Axe as treasurer back in March last year. Um, thanks to the smooth talking of Everald Thompson. But it wasn't so much his smooth talking, um, it was when he started to tell me about the work that Axe was doing, that was doing for people in real need. And at that stage, I had no hesitation in coming on board, so to speak, on the board of directors. <laughs> uh, so that work, however, has primarily due to your generosity the generosity of the congregations at Aspley Uniting Church. So over the 15 months, as treasurer, Axe has distributed nearly $102,000 to many people in need. Of this amount, $43,000 was provided to victims of fire, drought and recent floods. And some of those whom have lost everything for the second and third time. $13,000 went to victims of domestic and family violence, elder abuse and homelessness. $26,000 went to the provision of meals for the homeless. $5,000 dollars went to school breakfast programs to ensure that children do not start the day on an empty stomach or low nutrient or insufficient food. Under that breakfast program, the children also learn manners and social skills as they form friendships with peers and relationships with adult mentors. Now, Axe has also provided $11,000 of assistance to refugee families from Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, and more recently, the Ukraine. These and other forms of assistance provided by Axe have been made possible to those families in need through your generosity. <coughs> so today, is Act Sunday. And again, we ask you to show 
your generosity, that generosity that you've shown in the past. Your donations and fundraising activities will help us to continue providing this assistance to people in need. <clears throat> I think most of you know that uh, donations can be made <coughs> excuse me, through bank transfer. Um, and the details of that bank transfer are on the ACTS envelopes that you would have received as you came into the church. Or you may wish to just use the ACTS envelopes that have been distributed. Um, you may wish to complete them today, if you like, or you may wish to bring them back when you're next in church. So just to finish... Um, I'd, I'd, I'd just like to read a passage from the book of Deuteronomy. I'll read from chapter 15, verses 7 to 11. If there is among you anyone in need, <coughs> excuse me, a member of your community in any of your towns within the land that the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted towards your needy neighbour. You should rather open your hand, willingly lending enough to meet the need, whatever it may be. Be careful that you do not entertain a mean thought, thinking the seventh year, the year of remission is near, and therefore view the needy neighbour with hostility and give nothing. Your neighbour might cry to the Lord against you, and you would incur guilt. Give liberally and be ungrudging when you do so. For in all your work and in all that you undertake, um, sorry, <clears throat> uh, liberally and un ungrudging when you do so. For on this account, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all that you undertake. Since there will never cease to be some in need on the earth, I therefore say to you, Open your hand to the poor and the needy neighbour in your land. This is the word of the Lord. Now, Sam Bernie's in shorts and a summer shirt. I can't have his <laughs> on his own. Just got to Helen remind me to take that coat home sometimes. <laughs> Charlie is going to make us give us a message and do the reading. Good morning. I'm Shirley Cooper bringing you the readings this morning. But before, we, before I do that, I'm going to tell you um, about a, uh, a homelessness experience that I had in life. <clears throat> um, before, um, sorry. And how the charity of a good man of faith in a desperate situation was never forgotten. My husband and I, new husband and I, came to Australia in 1965. We got a job at Mount Buffalo, um, live-in job, and um, unfortunately, when he got sacked, don't ask, um, we we decided to drive north to Queensland looking for work, similar work, live-in work in the hospitality industry. But there was a, a great drought going on at the time, and we just couldn't find anything. Um, so when we got to, uh, to Brisbane, we decided to go out west and make our way back to Sydney down through the Inland Road. Still couldn't find work, so by the time we got to Armidale, we were pretty desperate. We were living in our ute, we hadn't eaten a meal for two days, living on a packet of biscuits. And um, it was getting, and all, the only money that we had was uh, enough petrol money to get us to Sydney to stay with relatives. So um, I decided that we should go to the police station and get arrested for vagrancy, which <laughs> apparently it was a thing. Um, well, of course, they just laughed. But they sent us to um, the senior Salvation Army officer in the town who gave us enough money for a night stay at the hotel and a meal. Um, he told us that his... Um, He'd been saving that money to give his children Easter eggs and presents. So his sacrifice was even greater than, you know, than usual. When I did get a, a job later, I did send him back the money, 
with a, uh, a covering letter thanking him for his kindness. Now I'll give the readings. The first reading is from Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. When you give to the poor, it is like tending to the Lord, and the Lord will pay you back. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 to 3, and 15 and 16. Keep on loving one another as Christian brothers and sisters. Remember to welcome strangers into your homes. There were some who did so and welcome angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you are in prison with them. Remember those who are suffering as though you are suffering as they are. Let us then always offer praise to God as our sacrifice through Jesus, which is the offering presented by lips that confess him as Lord. Do not forget to do good and to help one another, because these are the sacrifices that please God. And the last reading is James chapter 2, verses 14 to 18. My brothers and sisters, what good is it for someone to say they have faith if their actions do not prove it? Can faith save them? Suppose there are brothers and sisters who need clothes and do not have enough to eat. What good is it in your saying to them, God bless you, keep warm and have and eat well, if you don't have the necessities of life? So it is with faith. If it is alone and includes no actions, then it is dead. But if someone will say, one person has faith and other actions, my answer is, show me how anyone can have faith without actions. I will show you my faith with my actions. We're now going to um, sing the... Oh, this is... <laughs> I forgot this. <laughs> Sorry, left my uh, order behind. Um, we're now going to sing him uh, TIS 595 or the Australian hymn book 514. Oh Jesus, I have promised, and we're singing four verses.
Bernie and Everett, my bones are telling me something different in spite of the beautiful sun outside. So on this, good morning, on this our ex Sunday, and your service also marks the 15th year since X was uh, created by, from our 1015 service. Alan and I have been tasked, Andrew, sorry, Andrew and I have been tasked to share a few thoughts on the topic of why I answer a call for Christian service via X. Some 15 years ago, I remember two things attracted me to X. One, all donations were given out to help people. The only item charged against those funds was for the annual audit of the, of the books as required by law. This is in contra contrast to many organizations, charity organizations, that withhold up to 70% in a dollar for their office expenses. To X help individuals in need directly. This is in line, this is like when Jesus of Nazareth uh, did during his ministry on earth. In helping people in need, sometimes we come face to face with the fact that life is fragile. Earlier, uh, Bernie, in his report, mentioned the recent floods. Many families, as he said, were um, in, uh, affected by the floods uh, twice in a space of months. When contacting the families, Everett said he felt the, the raw emotions um, of, the, of the families' situations even through the phone. God commands us to love others. One of the most simple ways to love in helping um, is by helping when someone is in need. Benny mentioned, mentioned that uh, we actually gave away just over 100,000 over a period of over the last 15 months to help people in need and a simple demonstration of our concern and love for others. People we help wrote back expressing gratitude and appreciation. As well, they ask, where on earth is the Ashbury Uniting Church? And what is X? It fascinates people that this tiny little place that they have never heard of it before, called the Ashbury Uniting Church, and a small group of, of people they don't even know are prepared to walk with them in their hour of need. But there is, I believe, a deeper message in all the responses and feedback we receive. The message is best expressed in Sandra's recent sermon on the book of um, Revelation. In the midst of the disruptions and challenges in our lives, the main concern of Re Revelation, she said, is one of hope and encouragement. We pray that the work, the community work undertaken by Acts, inspires people towards a caring and compassionate community. Those are the same issues that also inspired me 
to do community work via X. Amen. Andrew Norton uh, is next, and uh, Andrew has just flown back from his old homeland of Scotland, where I think it might be slightly colder than here. Yes, uh, just back from uh, the United Kingdom uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm Andrew from the, uh, the 1015 service, and uh, I've been involved with the Acts Committee for around about three years now. And um, this morning I'd like to convey with, with you some, uh, some reflections in terms of what the call to service for Acts has meant to me and what it could mean for you as well. So, Aspley Caring Through Service. Apart from being a nifty acronym for me or for anybody else, ACTS is all in the name. What does it mean to you? When I first heard about ACTS, my mind immediately turned to the fifth book of the New Testament, the ACTS of the Apostles. In my mind, you can see that the first four Gospels are kind of the theory, and the ACTS is where the rubber hits the road, where the practice begins, and this continues through throughout Paul's letters as we heard earlier in Shirley's readings from, from Hebrews, and um, also in the book of James. So what these scriptures tell us is the paramount importance of works in tandem with faith. If we first have a look at Hebrews, it mentions service well-pleasing to God and the words of letting mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, as some have entertained angels without knowing it. Continuing on to verses 15 and 16, it asks, asks, it asks, asks us to continue to offer a sacrifice of praise to God. Fruit of our lips confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and share what you have. Such sacrifices are pleasing to God. As we come into the, the final readings from, um, from James, this is about the concept of um, faith by itself without works is dead. If faith has no works, how can faith save you? And many others this morning have, have already touched on this, but you know, if somebody is needy of food, for food and clothes, their primary needs, you know, to deny these material needs and just, just show them platitudes of faith is pretty pointless. These material needs need to be met first. Show your faith apart from your works, and I by my works will show you my faith. I believe that Acts, as a registered charity, is a manifestation of what this faith in action is all about and about putting faith into works. It's been running for over 15 years now, helping those both near, but more often far, across Australia. Recent years have seen fire, flood, and recent pestilence sweep this great southern land. It's hard to say whether recent years have been worse than any others in living memory, but what we can say with surety is that the need is always there. In terms of uh, my involvement with ACTS, I've had a particularly, particular heart for those in need in Victoria. And I'm very proud that we've been able to match the donations broadly from the congregation here in, in Aspley to several food truck and food bank initiatives in the outer suburbs of Melbourne, notably in Frankston and Cranbourne. It's heartening to hear the positive and grateful feedback we receive, knowing that our ACTS donations have made a real difference to strangers, people we don't know, um, but we do know that our acts of kindness have been visible. And you could say that that is an example of mutual love without strings, strings attached. Our work here is both biblically correct and it's the right thing to do for humanity. Both the committee, church, and for those involved, we are very, very grateful for the work that uh, we've been able to undertake and thank you for your continued support. And I'd really like to hope this, that this endeavour can continue for many years to, co to come. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Wally and Andrew. There are, there are two members of the Act Board who aren't present here today. One is Sandra, who, as you know, is on holidays, but Sandra organised this service before she left and picked the hymns and sorted us all out, and so she's with us in spirit in, in that. And Faye Nolan, who's a recent addition to our board, Faye uh, worships at the All Saints Anglican Church at Chermside, the wife of a Anglican priest, uh, now, now, now passed away, and she uh, does great work down at the church looking after the poor in Chermside, and she joined our board, and I know Faye's going to listen in uh, at some point. She's in Darwin uh, with her daughter and her granddaughter, and so couldn't, that, was a, that journey was fixed before we decided on this Sunday, but we're grateful to have Faye's service here. <clears throat> now, a few things about where we've come from, where we're going. When Acts was formed 15 years ago, it was several people from the 1015 service who got it together. Those people have moved on to live in other places and aren't with us now, and so Wally and I, and when they left, Wally and myself and Reg Miles were the three they were appointed to take their place and then the board expanded uh, from that and Manor was on the board at, as well and it grew from a vision of the a few people in the 1015 congregation who believed that we needed to be a serving church and that we needed to have a focus, just like John Wesley said, of, of helping people beyond the church. And so that's where we started from and that's where we're still heading. But to do these things, people have to have an inspiration as to as to why you get involved. And uh, uh, Wally and Andrew and Shirley have just and and, and uh, uh, Bernie have told you why they're involved. My inspiration uh, comes from many people like John Wesley, but many great servants of the church and great servants of of Jesus of Nazareth. And one who particularly inspires me to be involved is St. Francis of Assisi. And in recent times, I've been reading some books about Francis of Assisi. If you actually type into Google the words St. Francis of Assisi, <laughs> there's about 100 books written about him, probably the most famous Christian of all time. In fact, a, a theologian recently said that the two most famous people after Jesus of Nazareth were St. Paul and St. Francis of Assisi, St. Paul went out looking for members and did a, we're here today because of him, but Francis of Assisi was the one who showed to Christians that we've got to be out there in the world uh, doing things. And so I've read a couple of books about him and read what Google says about him. Now, Google's not always correct, but the overwhelming evidence is that here was a very great man from whom we can learn some things. He was uh, born a thousand years ago into a wealthy family in the city. And he lived a very privileged life, and as a young man, he played it up around town, and he was one of the, the key players in the social life of the town. Now, to cut a long story short, uh, he experienced two things in his life. One, he was confronted one day by a very poor man who begged for arms for his family, and he arrogantly pushed him away, thinking he's nothing. And then when he, when he was going home, he thought that was wrong. And he followed the man and found him and gave him money that he needed. And that had a profound effect on him. Is why am I living in this splendour and these people are not? And then another day, he had an encounter with leprosy. Back in those days, leprosy was a, the scourge of the earth and most people feared leprosy. There was no cure. And one day a leper came and appealed to him for money. And again he rejected him and the same thing happened. But not only did he follow him and give him money, he wrapped his arms around him and hugged him and that's not something you usually do with a leper, or you ought to do. And those two things made him believe that he had to change his life totally. Now there's all sorts of events happened along the way that I haven't got time to tell you. But he finally left his home, revoked in, in his father's will, all entitlement to every bit of money that he had. And he walked out, left all his clothes behind except one of the poorest set of clothes he had and set out 
to live with the poor and the lepers. And he did that for the rest uh, of his life and he would not even receive any help from his family. Now the story of how he did that is tremendous, but he lived all his life eating and sleeping with the poor and, and, and not only people with leprosy, uh, you know, uh, the, the p people who were, who, who were ill. And along the way, and he said to people, it's good that you give alms to those who are in need, but you don't really understand poverty until you live with poor people. You don't really understand leprosy and illness unless you sleep with those people and share your life with them. You don't really understand you're dancing around the fire when you do that. Now, I don't think any of us are going to go to that extreme, but what he said was that in his life, that's what he wanted to do. And so he formed an order of monks. He had to be poor to get into it. And they're the Franciscan monks. And there are now the Order of St. Francis is now all over the world, still survives 1,000 years later, based on the example of this incredible man. And they still do the same work as he did all that time later. Now, we're not getting anywhere near what St. Francis did. I don't think any other human being has done what St. Francis uh, has done. But we're headed in that direction of doing things that hurt us in order to, to, serve, to serve people. So in looking at what St Francis did and what Acts is doing uh, now, we've got to say to ourselves that Acts is only doing part of the job in looking after people. When you give money to people in need, that satisfies a crisis at that moment. But we all know that the trauma that brought about that crisis is still in their hearts and minds. The, th the thousand dollars we give to flood victims, that's, they're terribly grateful for that, but they still have to live with the agony of the whole thing they're going through. And because we help people in remote places, we aren't able to provide them with the ongoing friendship that's there. And we're looking at how we might do that in, in times ahead through telephone calls and Zoom meetings and help from people like you who might say, well, I'm happy to keep an eye on this family here and that family there. We're only doing half the job if we just give money. We've got to go beyond that and to do it all. And to show what it means to me, there was one of the victims we helped in the floods, a young woman who was autistic and she had a partner who was not very skilled and unemployed and she only had partial employment. They got themselves their first little house and it got flooded out and they weren't insured. And uh, Milton Dick, the federal member for Oxley, phoned me up, he you know, knew about acts and phoned me up and said, these people, he said, I've tried to get them government money, there's all sorts of problems, can acts help? And I phoned them up and he was enormously grateful for the $1,000 and we got a bank account. And she had my phone number because in her phone because I phoned her. A couple of days later she phoned back and she said to me, will you be upset if I give half of this money to my neighbour? She said, my neighbour I've just found out is in worse trouble than me and I think it's wrong for me to take this thousand and not share it with my neighbour. Do you mind? And I was a bit, I said, of course I don't mind. And I said to her, you are a wonderful person. And she said to me, do you know that you're the first person that has ever said that to me? She thought she was rejected because of her autism. And I said to myself, this is the sort of pastoral work we should be doing, having some relationship with these family and these, these people. <coughs> so Axe is going to try to get into new areas. One area we're not in is the area of soul parents, where one person looking after a family. Some of the people we helped in the floods were exactly those people, but there's an enormous problem there for soul parents. The biggest problem they've got is in all the struggle to bring up their family, they've got no one to talk to. And we're hoping we might be able to form a relationship with soul families, not only give them financial help, but be able to keep in contact with them 
from this congregation. Now, there's a myriad of things we can do out there if we've got enough money, but money doesn't solve everything, and so we can expand our work in all sorts uh, of ways. Now, I, when you look at, let's look again at St. Francis of, of Assisi. He died aged 44. Now, that was considered old in those days, a thousand years ago, most people didn't get past 50. But he died simply because his old body was worn out through all those years of privation, and he died. When he died, as he was dying, his friends around him saw that he had marks on his hands and on his feet and in his side, marks. And they looked in wonder that these were the exact places where Jesus of Nazareth had marks in his body. And they believed to that day that because of that intensity of his love of Jesus of Nazareth, he grew so like Jesus of Nazareth that the scars appeared. Now, most people today say, well, that's rubbish. That could not have possibly happened. And who are us to give judgment to what it is? But the legend comes down that that's what happened and the people who were with him swore that he had those marks. And the psychiatrist, psychiatrist wrote once that if you love a person enough, you get to be like that person in all sorts of ways. And if your love is intense enough, the likeness grows. And it could well be, not for me to judge, that this man grew to be like Jesus of Nazareth. And so we can say to ourselves today, as we commit ourselves to another year of, of work with Acts, can our love of Jesus of Nazareth, can our love of the human race cause us to be so passionate that it becomes an indelible part of our life in all that we do. And so I commend to you not the work of Acts, but for the thousands of people out there we should be helping. And if anybody in need needs to think of where to go in need, it should be a church. It was remarkable when Shirley was in Armadale that the police sent her to the Salvation Army, the first thought that came. And people should think of us as a place where that happens. And so we continue to march down the road in the footsteps of Francis of Assisi. Amen. Now, we're going to sing a hymn that's based on some words of St Francis. He didn't write the hymn, somebody wrote it. It's made some on some verses that he wrote, make me a channel of your peace.
member of the Board of Action to lead us in our prayer for others. Thank you, everyone. Um, morning, all. My name's Jose. I'm also from the 1015 service. <clears throat> and this morning, I'll be bringing you the prayer for others, followed by the Lord's Prayer. But before I do, just to reiterate uh, the messages that we've shared with you all today from all the uh, board of directors, it is very much a, a privilege and an honor for us to serve this charity. But more importantly, we do thank you for your your contributions that make this possible for us. Um, and we continue to seek your assistance in, in the year moving forward that we may continue to do the work that we do. Let us pray. Loving and compassionate God, who is ever present, we are grounded in your love. We remember the words of Jesus to love the, your neighbor. We pause to bring our concerns and prayers for others before you, not as a fix-it list for you to remedy, but to remind ourselves that we have the responsibility to care for each other as well as ourselves. We think especially of the needs of families, families in all their forms, the tensions, stresses, and things that might be challenging for households at this time, as well as the, the things that enrich and strengthen them and the joys of family life. We think of families where there may be anxiety about children returning to school or going to school for the first time, facing new fears and challenges. We think of the stresses that this virus pandemic has placed on families, health worries, financial stress, loved ones lost, livelihoods lost or badly damaged, people working from home, children doing homeschooling. We think of families where there is tension and stress, communication breakdown, and family violence. For those experiencing mental health issues, social isolation, and homelessness. For all people everywhere who are facing or trying to recover from catastrophic environmental change. We also think of the, the factors that protect families and make us stronger and more resilient. Good friends, companions, people to share our lives with to share our concerns with, people who provide needed support, people who love us, and people who help foster a strong sense of community and identity and hope for the future. We pray especially for our public health team and those that care for everyone in our community. We remind ourselves that we live together in community. We remind ourselves of our call to mission and responsibility to continue to work for social justice. We pray for the strength to continue on and to play our part in discerning the future of our mission at Asprey. We pray for its sustainability and the legacy we will pass to those who will follow. We ask all these in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray and say. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Thank you to all the ACTS team who have taken part in this service this morning. Before I pronounce the benediction, you, you'll note that the, the uh, blessing song at the end is not our usual one. We're going to sing one that's usually sung at the start of church services, but it's a real good positive one to end on. So we're going to sing Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow, which is the uh, uh, 573 in the hymn book. But let's bow our heads. Uh, for, the, for the benediction. Great Spirit, make us a channel of your peace. Give us strength to serve humanity. 
Give us wisdom to do it well. May grace and peace be with us all. Amen. Away we go. What's that? I've jumped ahead of him. Well, now, thanks for reminding me of that. Uh, it just shows that I'm over the hill. And I turned 91 this year, you know. It gets a bit harder to get out of bed every day, you know. I'm sorry, well, well let's get into it then. That's right, I gave, I gave Jose a lecture saying... mistake I made proves that I made the right decision. At the last board meeting of Acts last month, I gave notice that if I survive to my 92nd birthday, that's October next year, I'll be resigning as chairman of Acts because I reckon no congregation should have a 92-year-old broke in charge of anything. And after 12 years, I reckon it's time I walk the plank anyway. So this morning's Fopa makes me realise I made the right decision. And the other thing is I know that the graveyards of the world are full of indispensable people. Just remember that. <laughs> so, God bless you all and let's sing Praise God from whom all blessings flow.